Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Thank you for joining me. I had an interesting discussion in the last video. I can't possibly respond to all the comments, but uh, it was quite a thoughtful video <laughs> and uh, there were some interesting comments. And I think it's worth uh, looking at that video or at least the comments below that video to um, see how it was received. This video is uh, somewhat different. We're going back to uh, antennas from the past. And uh, I discovered an antenna which, if I did know about it, I'd forgotten about it because it was the details were published such a long time ago. But when I read the um, uh, article, it reminded me of a, an article that I published back in May 1965. Gosh, I was only 22 years old then, and I've kept a copy. Uh, they had a readership of something like 50,000. Anyway, I'll publish this article, which is just there. It's actually um, a, uh, an inverted L antenna, grounded, as you would expect um, an inverted L to be, or maybe not, but anyway, this one was grounded, and it was fed at the far end. And the reason for that was, uh, I, was oper I was living at home, I was operating from my bedroom, and... Uh, I wanted to get some vertical polarisation, so I decided to make an inverted L and feed it from the uh, top. So I had a um, an antenna matching it of some sort, I guess, or maybe not. Perhaps I fed it straight into the Pi network, um, and uh, the wire then went horizontally, and then down vertically to the ground, and I had some radials buried in the ground. <laughs> anyway, um, it was that um, that uh, was triggered when I read this um, article in uh, Radcom. Down. Uh, Radcom, uh, nine, uh, July 1970, Pat Hawker was the um, author behind Technical Topics and it was something that we all look forward to in Radcom and I don't know how many years it ran for but it ran for many years and uh, when I was first licensed I used to be fascinated uh, by it and uh, there's some interesting articles. Anyway, Pat Hawker regularly wrote about antennas. By the way, his call sign was G3VA and he lived somewhere in uh, um, South West London, I think. And uh, he um, wrote an article or wrote um, a bit about um, this particular antenna, which was actually an upside down vertical antenna. Upside vertical antenna. What's an upside down vertical antenna? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. Basically, uh, he had got some information about this particular antenna, and he, he actually opens by um, sort of defending the dipole, saying that although people rave about vertical antennas, uh, the dipole can easily match a vertical antenna, uh, even for low angle radiation, put a dipole up at half, wave above the ground, and you get really good performance, go to low angle and work plenty of DX. And there was obviously something going on between an argument in, in Radcom between verticals and horizontal antennas, and I think that still exists today. I've, I've covered vertical antennas quite a bit uh, in the previous videos and explained that uh, vertical antennas seem to work better in some parts of the world than others. Particularly, they, they seem to work very well for Brian in New Zealand, ZL3XDJ. Um, they don't work nearly so well for me. I find that I can get far better results with a horizontal dipole. Um, uh, my dipole is around about 28 feet, I think, above ground, and um, uh, that was that's a half size G5 RV. Although I have changed it in the last few days to something else, but that's another video. Um, but I've used this half size G5 RV at 28 feet, and I work all over the world, get no problems at all. And I think we tend to um, we tend not to realise that. Uh, even for DX, the angle of radiation needed is no more lower than around about perhaps 15 degrees or so um, because um, most DX is multi-hop or cordal hop as it is when I work Brian in New Zealand and the takeoff angle can be anything around about 10, 15 or even perhaps 20 degrees because most DX is multi-hop so this business about 5 degrees is sort of neither here nor there at uh, it's either cancelled out or it gets absorbed. So um, take heart that you don't need that ultra low angle radiation to work DX. And in fact, most DX I think you'll find is worked at a somewhat higher angle. In fact, I was talking to a um, very um, prominent DXer a couple of months ago and he said 
that very often he had to lower his yagis. He had a tower around about 100 feet, but he said very often he found by lowering the tower to around about 60 feet, which actually raised the angle of radiation, um, that was very often better for a lot of the DX. Now in this uh, short article written by Pat Hawker, he, he goes through the pros and cons. I mean, the pros of the vertical antenna, quarter wave vertical, is that it's ideal for a small garden. It doesn't take up much room at all. You can mount it at ground level and it offers good low angle radiation. Although that low angle is really only use on the higher bands. Uh, when you get to 40 meters, you don't really want low angle radiation for normal contacts. Uh, you really want horizontal a bit of high angle. Anyway, uh, it does have its attractions for the small garden where that is the only option. The cons are that you need to put radials and quite a few of the radials down, which can be a bit of a problem. Or you can raise the antenna in the air as a ground plane, which was very popular in those days, but again, you've got to have radials in the air. Now, I've put up on the screen the basic concept. It's what uh, we used to term a T aerial. You've got a horizontal wire and a vertical wire. And for the purpose of this, um, we're going to talk about 14 megahertz because that's where uh, Pat Hawker, well, that's the band that Pat Hawker um, constructed his own version on. And therefore, if you look at the uh, diagram, the horizontal section will be a half wave on 20 meters. Each, each leg, each side of the vertical will be a quarter wave. And then you've got a quarter wave leg coming down, which is actually the vertical, the part that does the radiation. The height of the antenna uh, above the ground is not particularly critical. It can be any sort of height, really. Uh, I guess in most uh, cases, it'll only be a few feet above the ground, which makes installation a lot easier. So the horizontal section comprises basically two legs. You've got two radials, which are 180 degrees um, apart because they're basically in a straight line, but they are actually connected uh, as, a, as a single wire, 33 foot long or thereabouts. And then the vertical section is a quarter wave, which is around about 16 and a half feet uh, long. Sorry, it's in old money. Now the actual final dimensions may need to be jiggered around slightly. But this is the basic idea. Now you may well uh, say, well, wait a minute, what that horizontal section is going to radiate? Well, it doesn't because those two legs um, are out of phase with each other and therefore they cancel out. So the only radiation that takes place primarily is from the vertical. And there are there's three ways of feeding this. Uh, if you look at the diagram uh, on the, the first one, A, that is basically got an antenna matching unit at the base of the antenna. Uh, not the most popular way of doing it. Uh, the next one shows the um, balance line coming away from the base of the antenna going to uh, an antenna matching unit. Now they show it's a quarter wave long, but in actual fact um, it, could be, it could be longer than that. I think the reason they've shown it's a quarter wave long is because that would be a, a, a high current point. The third way of doing it is actually to use that balance line as a transformer to transform the high impedance down to a low impedance. Therefore, that balance line is a quarter wave long. Don't forget um, the uh, velocity factor. So if you're using a 450 ohm level line, that would be uh, about 91% of a, a normal electrical quarter wave. And then use coax cable going back to the transceiver. Pat uh, Hawker does make the point that the dimensions don't to be super critical and I would imagine that there'll, there'll be a bit of jiggering about to get the dimensions exactly right but I think basically provided you've got the the vertical section and the two horizontal sections then the whole system will work. Apparently uh, Pat Hawker was very impressed with it. Um, he said that um, he tried to forget the sort of the new, new antenna factor that sometimes comes into play where it's either either it's very very good or very very bad and you judge the antenna on the first 24 hours use which is not a good idea but he said that he found that uh, for stations beyond three and a half thousand miles the vertical was certainly better than his dipole there was no mention of noise or anything like that but there were supplementary reports from other stations who also tried the antenna and also found it 
apparently very good. Apparently the T antenna was, was very popular for uh, medium frequency uh, transmissions back in the 30s and 40s. Um, but of course this, is, this puts a different sort of uh, um, perspective on it. And uh, by all accounts, it's, uh, it's an interesting antenna to, uh, to try. Now, I did actually ponder whether there's another way of uh, configuring this. Bearing in mind that the base of that antenna is high impedance, so we could put um, at the base, instead of having a balanced line, we could put a 49 to 1 unun, which should match into 50 ohm coax OK. And that would mean to say that the antenna would be resonant both on 20 metres and 10 metres, although the, the radiation pattern would be some, somewhat different, the vertical radiation pattern would be some, somewhat different. But I did wonder whether, and I'll put the drawing up on the screen here, whether you could have a fibreglass pole that's, say, I don't know, 20 foot tall, and you could have the two um, horizontal um, arms, the two horizontal radio, radials coming down at a not a two not a two acute angle coming down at an angle and then running the, the actual radiator the, the vertical element down the side of the fiberglass pole and i wondered how well that would work uh, be interested i'm not quite sure what the effect the um the, the, the would have on the uh, performance of the antenna if those radials were bent down um but it was interesting interesting uh, experiment and of course it's very easy to actually do all you've got to do is run up uh, a bit of wire a quarter wave long up the side of the fiberglass pole, connect it to the two top radials, connect to a 49 to 1 unknown at the base and just see what happens. I might try that actually. There we are. So, an interesting antenna. So how well does it actually work? Well, Pat Hawker was very enthusiastic about it and um, as I say, he, he converted his 20 metre dipole to one and he got some very, very good results. I think it's one of these antennas that merits experimentation because it's not too difficult to erect. The good thing about it is that the vertical section is self-supporting because it's hanging down. The support section is well up in the air, so it can be uh, strung between two poles. So the whole configuration does have merit. And it will be interesting to see how present day operators get on with it. I haven't uh, actually tried one yet because uh, I'm doing some alterations here and I can't actually change the antenna system very easily. But back in 1970, it was greeted with great enthusiasm. The downside is it's basically a single band antenna, although other stations have latterly chimed in and said, oh, well, it works on other bands as well. I suppose that most antennas will work on other bands as well, but it's not terribly well. It's uh, one of these things that uh, you need to try. And um, uh, Pat Hawker does mention the fact that sometimes an an antenna will work on another band which is unexpected. And it's referred to as the AOG effect. I'll let you look that one up. There we are. So, interesting antenna. Give it a try and uh, see how you get on. You may be pleasantly surprised. I say it's a sort of antenna you can erect very quickly. And uh, if it doesn't work, well... You know, go back to uh, plan B <laughs> or plan A as it might be. Thank you for your support on this channel. It's much appreciated. Um, do uh, do appreciate all the comments you make. Uh, can't possibly reply to them all, but uh, I do read them all and it's fascinating reading. And also thank you for your support at the shop. It's much appreciated. Uh, we've got all sorts of goodies there. Don't forget to check the second hand section of our website. We've got some lots of, lots of goods there as well. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio. You take care. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.